I'm Helen Pearson and this is me in the morning. I'm a features editor for Nature and I find myself pretty busy all the time. That's why when I heard about a unique lab in Oxford that uses diaries to learn about how people use time, I became really interested. They gave me the chance to complete one of their diaries. I wore a small camera which took three photos a minute through my whole day and an accelerometer to wear around my wrist which tracked my activity. This is my commute to work. It was a day when I had to take my two older children to school and then drop my toddler at the nursery before heading to work. Time use studies and accelerometers are a good way of finding out when people are actually most active. It turns out that a session at the gym or exercise class tends to burn up less energy than things like domestic work or childcare, because although these things are less physically intense, we tend to do them for longer. I was most active during my commute, and also in the mornings and evenings when I was with the kids and doing things around the house. My days at work mostly involve sitting at the computer, dealing with news stories and endless emails as well as going to meetings. It usually feels really busy. Some of the researchers have looked at this idea that we're all much busier these days than we were in the past. But despite a general perception that we're all busier, Time Use Diaries suggest that, on average, that's not true. There are some exceptions, though. Two notable examples are single parents who work and professionals with young children who are under pressure to work hard and spend quality time with their kids. Researchers suggest that one reason for this perception that everyone is busier now is that business has become a type of status symbol. We say we're busy because it makes us look good, whereas saying you've got nothing on and are watching TV doesn't sound so great. A lot of people tend to overestimate how long they spend working too. Some professions are particularly bad at this, like police and teachers and lawyers. They overestimate the most. So now I've escaped meetings and I'm on my way back home. One thing I learned from looking at all my photos was how much I use my phone. Checking emails, on the web and listening to music, it seems like it was hardly out of my hand. My train was delayed on this day, so I ended up answering emails, reading nature and science, and then doing a bit more work. Another thing I was asked to do in the diary was to record how much I was enjoying each activity. I was pretty unhappy about being stuck on the train, while my happiest moments seemed to be when I was sleeping, walking through the park, and putting my toddler to bed. When I got home, I did a few more chores and helped put the children to bed, but in fact my partner Peter was doing most of the childcare and domestic work that evening. That fits really well with what the Oxford Lab has found. Compared with the 1960s, women now tend to spend less time doing unpaid work like household chores and more time in paid work. It also seems that men are gradually doing more domestic work as attitudes are changing. So let's break down my day over a 24-hour period. I spent most of my day working, more than nine hours. But this was the day nature's stories go to press, so I wasn't surprised it was that busy. The next biggest slice was sleeping and what the researchers call personal care, which means showering, cleaning your teeth and so on. Then I spent three hours, 20 minutes on household work and family, which was more than I thought it would be. And it also showed how much of my day was eaten up by commuting. That was around two and a half hours. Even though I lived this day, looking at the data was still really revealing and time use researchers have already collected about 150 diaries like mine to see what more they can learn about how people use their time. So if you want to know where your time is going, I'd really recommend keeping a time use diary for a day.